I would not be standing here today as Prime Minister. No female MPs would have taken their seats in Parliament. None of us would have had the rights and protections we now enjoy were it not for one truly great woman, Dame Millicent Garrett Fawcett. The struggle to achieve votes for women was long and arduous. Dame Millicent was there from the beginning and devoted her life to the cause. As a teenager, she collected names for the first pro-suffrage petition, even though she was too young to sign it herself. As a young woman, she overcame a dislike of public speaking and took to the platform at the first women's suffrage meeting to be held in London. For decade after decade, in the face of often fierce opposition, she travelled the country and the world, campaigning not just for the vote, but on a whole range of issues. She was a tireless advocate for equal access to education, pressuring universities to admit women on equal terms and establishing her own Cambridge College. She fought for the rights of sex workers, convincing politicians to overturn the discriminatory Contagious Diseases Act. She campaigned to protect children from exploitation and abuse, reported on the treatment of civilians in the Boer War, because the fight for equality is far from won. And as long as that is the case, we will need brave women and men to stand up and speak out in the face of injustice and discrimination. Doing so will not always be easy. But courage calls to courage everywhere. And for generations to come, this statue will serve not just as a reminder of Dame Millicent's extraordinary life and legacy, but as inspiration to all of us who wish to follow in her footsteps. Thank you, Prime Minister. And now the words of Dame Millicent herself will be brought alive for us by the actor Helen McCrory. She's going to be reading from a speech called Looking Backwards that Dame Millicent delivered in March 1918. I have often said what I most devoutly believe, that the suffrage movement through all its 50 years of existence in practical politics has made continuous and fairly rapid progress, moments of disappointments. But those whose disposition and training led us to take the long views, what we were able to do without suffrage, without the vote, is in the highest degree encouraging for our successes. The speed of the movement increased by its own momentum. But everyone acknowledges how extraordinarily it has been stimulated by the war. I can only hope that those who are beginning their work now may have as joyful a 50 years before them as I and many of my dearly loved colleagues have